stability of total credit growth. In September, we increased the quota of SME supporting relending by 300 billion yuan to support local bank corporations in increasing loans to micro and small businesses and self-employed businesses. In November, we launched a carbon emission reduction supporting instrument and a RMB 2 billion special relending to support clean and efficient use of coal so as to increase overall energy supply capacity and promote clean and efficient use of coal. In December, we cut the RRR by another 0.5 percentage points, releasing about 1.2 trillion yuan of long-term funds. So we had two reduction of RRR, and uh, we held uh, a symposium on analyzing the monetary and credit situation of financial institutions, guiding financial institutions to make cross-cycle credit arrangements for the end of the year and the beginning of the next year. We lowered the interest rate of relending in support of agriculture and SMEs by 0.25 percentage points, and the one-year LPR was lowered by 0.05 percentage points, which helped enterprises' comprehensive financing costs to remain stable and fell moderately. We have converted the two direct instruments into market-based policy tools to support micro and small businesses and support their financing. We raised the FX um, RRR for financial institutions by two percentage points and kept the RMB exchange rate basically stable and at an adaptive and balanced level. We've had a quite busy schedule for the whole year, but we have made well-paced steps and we have targeted measures taken to ensure growth and structural improvement. Overall, the 2021 monetary policy was flexible, precise, appropriate and moderate, and has become more forward-looking, stable, targeted, effective and self-directed. China's major financial indicators have maintained strong growth on top of the high base of 2020. The base was relatively high in 2020. The financial system operated steadily and financial support for the real economy was solid. In 2021, new RMB loans reached 19.95 trillion yuan, an increase of 315 billion yuan uh, year on year. By the end of 2021, the M2 and aggregate financing to the real economy have increased by 9% and 10.3% year-on-year respectively, basically matching nominal economic growth. On a two-year average, the M2 and aggregate financing to the real economy grew by 9.5% and 11.8% respectively, basically matching and slightly higher than the average nominal economic growth in 2020 and 2021. By the end, uh, in In 2021, the macro leverage ratio was 272.5%, down by 7.7 .7 percentage points. And the interest rate for corporate loans went down by 0.1 percentage point uh, compared with 2020, and 0.69 percentage points than that of 2019, the lowest level since the reform and opening up. At the end of 2021, the balance of medium and long-term loans in the manufacturing sector increased by 31.8% percent year on year, 20.2 percentage points higher than the growth rate of all loans. At the end of November, the balance of inclusive loans for micro and small businesses increased by 26.4% year-on-year, benefiting more than 43 million SMEs. And the weighted average interest rate of newly issued inclusive SME loans in November was 4.98%, percent, point one percentage point lower than that of December 2020. In 2022, the PBOC will implement the guiding principles of the Central 
Economic Work Conference prioritize stability while pursuing progress, adopt prudent monetary policy and keep it flexible and well calibrated, step up cross-cycle adjustment, give full play to the dual functions of monetary policy tools, both in terms of volume and structure. We will take more active and advanced steps and forward-looking steps guide financial institutions to increase support for the real economy, especially micro and small businesses, scientific and technological innovation, and green development, stabilize the broader macro economy, and create an enabling monetary and financial environment for high-quality economic development. Specifically, the PBOC will focus on the following aspects. First, we will maintain steady growth in monetary loan. We will use a combination of monetary policy tools to maintain reasonably sufficient liquidity, ensure the enhance the stability of total credit growth, guide financial institutions to increase credit supply, and ensure that growth in money supply and aggregate financing to the real economy basically matches nominal economic growth. Second, we will steadily improve the credit structure. In terms of structural monetary policy tools, we need to do a good job in addition, implement market-based policy instruments supporting micro and small businesses, instruments supporting carbon emissions reduction, and special relenting supporting clean and efficient use of coal. Guide financial institutions to increase the supply of credit to slow credit growth regions. Some regions see relatively slow increase of credit growth. So we will guide financial institutions to increase the supply. And we will increase, in a targeted manner, uh, the credit support for key areas and weak links. Third, we will promote steady decrease of overall financing costs. We will improve the market-based formation and transmission mechanism of interest rates, make full use of the LPR in promoting reform, uh, ensure stability of banking funding costs, and ensure a steady decline in the overall financing costs of enterprises. And fourth, we will keep the RMB exchange rate basically stable and at, at an adaptive and balanced manner. The market supply and demand will play a decisive role in the formation of the exchange rate, and the exchange rate will serve as an automatic stabilizer for macroeconomic adjustment and international balance of payments. There are many factors affecting the exchange rate. Inaccuracy in estimation is inevitable. Two-way fluctuation is normal. Enterprises and financial institutions should embrace the concept of risk-neutral. Financial institutions should actively provide exchange rate risk management services for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, reduce their cost of exchange rate hedging, and the goal is to keep the RMB exchange rate basically stable at an, at, and at an adaptive and balanced level. The exchange rate may deviate from the equilibrium level in the short term, but in the medium and long term, market factors and policy factors will correct the deviation. When the deviation becomes bigger, the redress will also become more effective. We will not allow a single way fluctuation because this means that the market is dysfunctioning. If we do not address that, it will lead to further dysfunction. And panic will bring greater panic. So we need to keep it under control to avoid the bubble bursting. We will not allow such situation to happen. And this is the opening remarks. And thank you. Thank you, Governor Liu.
And now the floor is open to questions. Please announce your media affiliation before asking a question. Thank you. With CCTV, my question is: Since priorities uh, stability this year, so how will central bank implement the task set at the Central Economic Work Conference to adopt more forward-looking policy and demonstrate the aspect of pursuing progress? Thank you for your question. Let me answer it. In 2021. Our prudent monetary policy was flexible, targeted, reasonable, and appropriate. In the second half of the year, we started to take proactive steps. Through cutting required reserve ratio, or RRR, by 0.5 percentage points in July, we made early preparations for downward pressure and paved the way for sustained and steady recovery in the second half of last year and Q1 of this year. It was pointed out at the Central Economic Work Conference that supportive policies need to be implemented ahead of schedule. In this context, the PBOC has followed the arrangement of the CPC Central Committee and State Council and adopted a host of measures. Last, uh, for example, we cut RRR by 0.5 percentage points, convened a seminar on money and credit situation with financial institutions, reduced the interest rate of central bank lending to support rural development of and MSBs by 0.25 percentage points, guided one-year LPR to drop by five basis points, charged the, changed the two instruments into market-oriented policy tools to support MSBs. By the two instruments, we mean that, number one, it is uh, the uh, delayment of principal and interest payments of the loans for MSBs. And number two is about the credit support for the MSBs. As the economic situation turns better, now we have change them into market-oriented policy tools. In this way, the financial institutions would discuss with the businesses to decide on relevant uh, loans. So in this way, as I mentioned, we have changed the two instruments into market-oriented policy tools to support MSBs. We have also leveraged cross-cyclic adjustment to promote economic growth this year. As our economy is facing triple challenges, loan stability itself means the biggest progress. Before the downward pressure eases fundamentally, we are sure it will ease going forward. But there is still a long time, and there is still time to go. And for the PBOC, we will. Prioritize stability, and we will adopt policies that support stability. We will promote stability with progress. And we need to step up efforts to ensure stability. And how to do that? Actually, it will be carried out in three aspects. Number one. We'll take sufficient measures and open the two box of monetary policy even wider and maintain overall stability and prevent a collapse of credit. Second, we'll take targeted measures to improve the economic structure. The financial institutions not only need to welcome their customers, uh, they also need to take proactive steps to support and extend credit to good projects. This is what I mean by targeted measures. Number three, we need to take early measures. This is the beginning of 2022. Actually, time flies quickly. Spring or Q1 is very important for the development of the whole year, so we need to adopt early steps and we need to move ahead of the curve and respond promptly to market concerns without delay. Actually, the longer the delay, 
the greater the concern of the market, then the greater the risk would be. So we should not delay. We should move ahead of the curve and respond promptly to market concerns. Meanwhile, I'm confident that with the concerted efforts of various parties and stakeholders, and with the strong support of the CPC Central Committee and the State Council, I'm sure our work will be effective. And in this process, we would find that one year actually is not a very short time. There are a lot of there is a lot of time for us to adopt measures. Now, what kind of measures should we adopt? As I mentioned previously, we need to、uh, adopt multiple measures. Number one, we need to maintain overall steady growth. We fully implement steps to ensure stability. Apply multiple、uh, multiple monetary policy tools. Keep liquidity at a reasonable and sufficient level. Enhance stability for credit growth and ensure money supply and aggregate financing grow in step with nominal economic growth. Number two, we need to promote steady structural improvement. We will apply new structural monetary policy tools and continue to increase credit support for MSBs, scientific and technological innovation, and green development. Number three, we need to work for steady decrease of financing costs for businesses. We、we'll、continue to leverage the outcomes of LPR reform. Guide the financial sector to support the real economy. Earnestly uphold the competition order of deposit and lending market. Stabilize the debt cost of banks. Actually, ensuring the competition order of deposit and lending market is very important. This will help prevent excessively high lending rate. Some. Poorly managed banks cannot get、uh, lending or loans. Then they would use excessive high interest rate to attract to attract loans, and that would disrupt the market order. And the well managed banks would also be affected. So the Uh, order of the deposit and lending market is very important. Just now, I talk about the lending rate, and the same is true with deposit rate. If the deposit rate is excessively high, then the lending rate would be high. Correspondingly, then the market would be disrupted as well. So this is what I mean by upholding the order of the deposit and lending market. And this is very important, and we also need to work for the steady decrease in the composite financing cost of businesses, especially MSBs. Next question, please. Thank you. With the paper facing the new changes of the real estate market, the PBOC has adopted some measures. What is the outcome of these measures? Thank you. Let me answer this question. Since the second half of last year, Evergrande and some other real estate companies have seen their risks become visible. As a result, the players of the real estate market are having great mood for market averse, and the financial institutions have also adopted some measures in response. Facing the situation, and according to the arrangement of the CPC Central Committee and State Council, the PBOC has worked together with other financial institutions to adopt some measures. Number one, we have kept the market-oriented and law-based measures. We work together with Guangdong government and relevant local government to、uh, ensure risk、uh, settlement. Number two, we have guided financial institutions. To、uh, conduct prudential management for real estate financing and keep the steady and orderly delivery of housing credit and meet the reasonable financing demand of the real estate market. Number three, we have 
adopted a notice on insuring financial services for risk settlement of key real estate companies, and we have guided relevant companies to support risk arrestment,、uh, risk settlement. With the joint efforts of various parties, recently the sales, land purchase, and financing are gradually returning to normal, and market expectations are steadily improving as well. As we look at the statistics, by the end of 2021, the outstanding loans of real estate sector stood at 52.2 trillion yuan, up 7.9 percent year on year, and it also marked an acceleration of 0.3 percentage points over September. In Q4 of last year, the uh, uh, new loans of real estate sector was 773.4 billion yuan, up 202 billion yuan. Or an increase of 157 billion yuan over Q3 of last year. Going forward, this PBOC will continue to fully implement the decisions of the CPC Central Committee and State Council. We will implement the decisions of Central Economic Work Conference. We will ensure that houses are to for living in, not for speculation. We will ensure the consistency and stability of real estate financial policy. And properly implement the prudential management of the real estate financing. We will also extend greater financial support for housing leasing, and ensure the steady development of the real estate sector. Thank you. Next question, please. With South China Morning Post. MLF and Ripple rates were cut on Monday. Does this mean that a new round of easy monetary policy has started? Will LPR be cut as well? Meanwhile,、uh, the Federal Reserve has also sent some signals.、Uh, does this gap between、uh, financial、uh, policies of China and the U.S.、Uh, will lead to some uh, uh, some results? What is your comment on that? Thank you.、Uh, since you see, this year we have strengthened cross-cycle adjustment, and on January the seventeenth,、uh, we have cut reverse repo and MLF interest rates by ten basis points. So when in LPR bidding, they have taken into account. Multiple factors to reflect the changes in market interest rates to cut comprehensive corporate financing costs. We have noticed the changes in the policy of major economies, and the market also has strong expectations for the changes of the Federal Reserve. And China has a big economy and strong resilience. We did not have a massive stimulus policy, but we、uh, have a well-designed policy to support the real economy and to deliver a more stable financial system. And we have stable expectation for RMB exchange rate. So these adjustments in major economies have limited influence on us. And Going forward, we decide our policy based on our own domestic situation, and increase and to give full play to the functions of exchange rate, and encourage market entities to embrace a risk-neutral concept and strengthen our management of expectations and.、Uh, We will proactively and steadily、uh, respond to the changes in the policy of major economies. Thank you. With 21st Century Economic Herald. So my question is:、uh, 
about uh, what are the structural features of the growth of aggregate finance into the real economy in 2021. What is, is the expectation for 2022? So in 2021, the um, cumulative increase in aggregate financing to the real economy was 31.35 trillion yuan, 3.44 trillion yuan less than the previous year, but 5.68 trillion yuan more than that of 2019. Financial support for the real economy remained strong. By the end of 2021, the aggregate financing to the real economy grew by 10.3%, which basically matched nominal economic growth. Structurally speaking, first, Loans issued by financial institutions to the real economy remain stable. In 2021, local and foreign currency denominated loans to the real economy increased by 20.11 trillion yuan, basically the same as in 2020, and 3.36 trillion yuan more than in 2019. Second, bond financing returned to normal. Stock financing saw a bigger increase. In 2021, Government bond financing reached 7.02 trillion yuan, 1.31 trillion yuan less than that of the previous year, mainly due to the issuance of 1 trillion yuan of special anti-epidemic government bonds last year, and the amount returned to normal in 2021. Non-financial corporate bonds financing totaled 3.29 trillion yuan. 1.09 trillion yuan less than that of last year. Non-financial companies raised 1.24 trillion yuan from domestic stocks markets, and 343.4 billion yuan more than that of last year. Third, off-balance sheet financing decreased considerably. In 2021, the three types of off-balance sheet financing, entrusted loans, trust loans, and undiscounted bank acceptances, were reduced by a net. 2.67 trillion yuan, 1.35 trillion yuan more than the reduction of the previous year. In 2022, the PBOC will earnestly implement the guiding principles of the Central Economic Conference, Central Economic Work Conference, adopt prudent monetary policy, and keep it flexible and well calibrated. Keep liquidity reasonably sufficient and ensure that the growth in aggregate financing to the real economy basically match nominal economic growth. Thank you. Next question, please. With Economic Daily, my question is that. So yesterday, we seen the interest rate for reverse repo and MLF. What are the considerations, and what will be the effect? So let me take this question. So、uh, reverse repo and MLF are. Based on market-based bidding, and the interest rate are settled through bidding and depends on various factors such as the liquidity of the banking system, the demand of financial institutions for central bank funds, and market expectations. So, in recent years, we have implemented the guiding principles of the Central Economic Work Conference and strengthened、uh, cross-cycle adjustment and increased liquidity and carried out a 700 billion. Um, yuan um, one-year MLF operation and 100 billion yuan of seven-day open market reverse repo. This is to increase the supply、uh, of liquidity, hedging short-term disturbances.、Um, mainly, the tax peak period in January accelerated government bonds issuance and large cash supply before the Spring Festival. So as To maintain reasonably sufficient liquidity, this has led to a 10 BP decline in interest rate for both MLF and open market reverse repo, and、uh, the rate of one-year MLF decreased from 2.95 percent to 2.85 percent, and that of seven-day reverse repo decreased from 2.2 percent to 2.1 percent. The decline in interest rates reflects that. Active and forward-looking monetary policy has boosted market confidence. This has lowered interest rate of corporate loan and、uh, bonds through transmission of LPR, and promoted steady decrease of overall financing costs, stimulated market entities' demand for financing, and enhanced stability of credit growth. This has also supported the issuance of central and local government bonds and helped ensure overall stability in the economy and maintain the balance between internal and external equilibrium. 
Next question, please. Thank you from Ithai. We have noticed some reports from companies that、uh, we need to take some stimulus measures to boost investment. Will leverage increase next year? Let me、uh, take this question. In 2021, given effective COVID response, significant progress has been made. In stabilizing leverage and promoting growth, in 2021, China's macro leverage ratio was 272.5 percent, 7.7 percentage points lower than the end of the previous year, marking、uh, so it is already declining for five consecutive quarters. We have a numerator and a denominator influencing this process. So we see the numerator is the total debt, while GDP is the denominator. So the leverage ratio is debt versus GDP ratio. So, in terms of the total debt, it remained stable, steadily growing. And as for GDP, it、uh, expanded significantly. We're seeing rapid growth. And playing an important role in deleveraging. Because China has effective COVID response, sustained economic recovery, and greater resilience of development. So this has enabled rapid、uh, GDP growth and lowering of leverage ratio. So we predict that in 2022, the macro leverage ratio is expected to remain basically stable. So according to the Central Economic Work Conference, we need to prioritize stability while pursuing progress and ensure sound and effective macro policies to boost internal drivers of growth. The continuous decline in macro leverage. Uh, creates room for the financial system to increase support for small and micro businesses, technological innovation, and green development. So internationally, with sound、uh, COVID control and resilient growth, China is expected. To outpace major developed economies in terms of growth, so the denominator will stay large and creating、uh, a foundation for better maintaining the macro leverage ratio. We will follow a systemic approach, make overall planning and coordination.、Mm. Implement a cross-cyclical monetary policy to serve high-quality economic development. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. With CNBC about housing credit, what will be the policy support? And as for the digital currency, what is the progress in piloting and development? What is 
the data on daily active users. As for its a new um, utilization in boosting consumption, including during the Winter Olympics, we will see more foreigners coming to China. Let me answer your questions. Let me answer the second question first. The PBOC in Shenzhen, Suzhou, Xing'an, Chengdu, Shanghai, Hainan, Changsha, Xi'an, Qingdao, Dalian, and other places, as well as at the venues of the 2022 Olympic Games, we have carried out digital currency pilot. It basically covers uh, Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei area, the Greater Bay Area, and Pearl uh, Harbor area. By the end of last year, digital currency scenario now uh, total about 8 million uh, personal uh, pocket is about 200 million. The, pi the pilot has effectively tested the stability of the technolog technology system as well as the applicability of the scenarios. It has also increased people's understanding of the concept of the digital currency. Going forward, the PBOC will follow the 14th five-year plan to steadily advance the research and development of digital currency and further deepen its application in administrative service, retail, and other scenarios. The R&D of the digital currency needs to be fully applied to support and serve people's lives and let more people understand the value of the digital currency and incentivize and mobilize the participants of the market. The first question is about the housing policy and the framework of the long-term policy. Competent departments have a macro arrangement at different places need to implement their city tailored policies. The core function of the housing market is that different cities and different places have different policies. In terms of housing credit, we already mentioned it previously. Housing credit needs to be kept basically stable. The housing is to live in, not for speculation. And according to the long-term mechanism, and according to the decision to ensure stability of expectations, stabilizing expectation means that people need to have stable expectations on the policies. I also mentioned that as we saw some major changes in the second half of last year. Relevant parties, including some financial institutions, have their judgments of the market, as well as the revolution of the evolution of the risks. And they made some responses to the changes. In that context, in September last year, the PBOC worked together with the financial institutions and help them better understand and judge the changes of the market situation and better implement the prudential policy and reasonably and meet the reasonable financial financing demand of the real estate sector. Next question, please. with Phoenix TV. My question is about monetary policy. On the basis of a rate cut yesterday, what is your view and take on the further possibility of rate cut? Thank you. 
Thank you for your question. Let me answer it. About interest rate, well, with steady progress in market-oriented reform of interest rate, especially since LPR reform in 2019, we have gradually improved our market-oriented interest rate formation, adjustment, and transmission mechanisms. In the past, the PBOC has the biggest say in the interest rate, but now it is not the case. And at the moment, there are two angles to look at interest rate. The first one is about the real interest rate, or the changes of the real loan interest rate. Since 2021, the PBOC has deepened LPR reform. Capped monetary policy transmission and impeded, increased competitiveness of credit market, and ensured steady decrease of lending interest rate on the basis of major drop in the previous year. In 2021, the business lending interest rate was 4.61 percent, the lowest in the 40 plus years since reform and opening up. The other angle is to. Look at factors affecting interest rate, which means we need to analyze the reasons behind the changes. As we know, LPR is the interest rate that banks charge their most creditworthy customers. It is a market-oriented、uh, factor. Funding cost. Market supply and demand, a risk premium, may affect LPR. In addition, open market operation interest rate (MLF) interest rate and deposit interest rate regulation may affect funding cost. Since 2021. PBOC has strengthened cross-cyclical adjustment, cutting down RRR by a total of one percentage point in July and December, to keep liquidity at a reasonable and sufficient level. We improved self-discipline management of lending interest rate in June and cut interest rate of pre-lending for rural development of and MSBs by 0.25 percentage point in December. Such policies have lowered funding costs for banks and prompted a five basis point decrease of one-year LPR last December. On July the seventeenth this year or yesterday, we increased liquidity, worked for a decrease of ten basis points of the interest rates of open market operation and. One year MLF. The interest rate of monetary and bond markets have fallen correspondingly. In the next couple of days, or on January the twentieth, the commercial banks would give their best、uh, rates.、Uh, we still do do not know what the rates will be. But we know that the commercial banks, as they are sensitive to various market changes, will refer to relevant、uh, recent factors in presenting their rates. Here, I want to take this opportunity to give you some、uh, technical explanation of LPR. LPR. Is a general term. It is there is no specific LPR for specific sectors. It is a general term. It has two types: one year and five year. The financial institutions would prefer to one year LPR in extending liquidity loans to businesses. And 
the financial institutions would prefer to five-year LPR in issuing medium to long-term loans. For example, the loan to to the manufacturing sector, the fixed asset investment loans, and the housing loans. As these loans are for the medium and long term, then they would refer to the five-year LPR. LPR is a macroeconomic variable. Its changes do not target any specific sector. As I mentioned, it is a general term. In reverse, it would affect all sectors. It is a general term and a comprehensive one. It is not tailored to any specific sector. With the changes of the interest rate, it would affect all sectors. Another point I want to make is about RRR. In 2021, the PBOC cut RRR by 0.5 percentage points respectively in July and December. Freeing up long-term funding was 2.2 trillion yuan. It has, in this way, improved the funding structure of the financial institutions and enabled them to better serve the real economy. With the rate cut. The average RRR of financial institutions is 8.4 percent, compared with other developing economies, or compared with ourselves in history. The RRR is not very high, which means that there is less space for adjustment going forward. Meanwhile, the rate is still 8.4 percent. We still have some space compared with the developed economies. Our rate is a bit high, with less room to maneuver. We can still make adjustment in light of the financial operation situation and macro adjustment need. We may make further adjustment. Thank you. Next question, please. With Bloomberg. Uh, let me take these two questions.、Uh, on your first question,、uh, China's exchange rate、um, is taking into account a package of currencies, and、uh, it is affected by many factors,、uh, including supply and demand. So we have two-way fluctuations, and so、uh, market supply and demand plays a decisive role in exchange rate formation. So the change is determined by the market. It can go up or down 
and so that's why the exchange rate can serve as an automatic stabilizer, and it can help achieve the balance between internal and external equilibrium. According to the changes we see the, in international financial markets, we expect、um, fluctuations in cross-border flow of capital. So we have quite a sound foundation to maintain the balance. Cross-border flow of capital will maintain a dynamic equilibrium, and going forward, the PBOC will prioritize stability and adopt a prudent. Monetary policy based on our domestic situation, and to give full play to the automatic stabilizer function of the foreign exchange rate, and we guide financial institutions to embrace risk neutral and to ensure basically stable. Exchange rate, and on your second question, in face of shrinking demand supply shock and weakening expectations, so in the second half of 2021, the PBOC has taken forward-looking、uh, response, and we have launched. Some、uh, relenting mechanisms and other tools, including supporting the clean use of coal and emissions reduction. And since December, we have strengthened cross-cyclical adjustment and lowered the RRR by another 0.5 percentage points, and to enhance the stability of credit growth. So we have. Turned the two direct instruments into market-based policies, and this can help us improve credit structure and help us to gain a good start in 2022. And as I, as I have mentioned, the loan has increased in 2021 more than that of last year, and so. The support from financial institutions to the real economy has increased. So we also see a loan much larger in 2020 than 2029, and even bigger increase in 2021. So the loan increased by 1.13 trillion yuan in December, and.、Uh, We are not seeing such a big growth because the base was quite high.、Um, but according to our experience, December is usually see a small number of loan. So from 2016 to 2019,、uh, the increase was less than one trillion yuan. But we have seen that number increased last year, which means that our policy has been effective. Since this year, we have strengthened cross-cyclical adjustment, and increased liquidity, and lowered the interest rate for MLF and reverse repo to stimulate demand and enhance stability of credit growth. And we will continue to prioritize stability and strengthen cross-cyclical adjustment. To increase reasonably sufficient liquidity, and as our policies are taking effect,、uh, financial institutions will increase their credit to the real economy, and the credit resource will be channeled to SMEs, green economy, and other key links to increase. That the growth of credit matches that of nominal economic growth, and I would like to add a few things、uh, to your second question. At the end of last year, the outstanding loan increased by 11%、uh, percent 
it was 0.5 percentage points over that of 2019. So we see that uh, medium to long term loan increased by 9.24 trillion yuan. And let's see where does these loans go. And for the key areas, the financial support is quite solid. As for manufacture, the loan increased rapidly by end of 2021. It increased by 31.8%. Compared with other sectors, 18.1 percentage points higher. So the loan to this sector, 1.67 trillion yuan. As for high-tech manufacturing, the loan increased by 32.8%. We see an increase of 364.3 billion yuan last year. And as for the industry medium and long term loan, uh, we see that increased by 22.6%. And in terms of infrastructure, we see the medium and long term loan increased by 15.3%. It was 1.1 percentage points higher than that of last year, and it was 3.82 trillion yuan uh, for the whole year. When we exclude the real estate, the service sector has seen increase of loan. The sector has seen an increase of 15.4 percent in terms of loan, and it was 1.7 percentage points higher than the average sectors. Thank you. As for the exchange rate, uh, I would like to add one thing for your reference. And now indeed, we see that it is hard to estimate exchange rate In the past, China and the United States, in terms of RMB and dollar, we see a quite regular uh, relations. But this year, we see that sometimes the US dollar has become stronger, while the RMB has also done so. So it is see it seems to be hard to understand. But last year, we have seen rapid economic growth and we have also seen our trade deficit, trade surplus, sorry, increase. This has also supported the RMB to get stronger. But if we look at the longer span of time, it is still in a reasonable it is still in a reasonable and stable space and it does not change the fundamental law but in short term the estimation seems to be harder and it stays stable in the long run China is a, a major economy. It is rarely seen in the world that a major economy will see a one-way fluctuation lasting for a long time for its currency. And it is even uh, less possible for China because we adopt and appropriate policy. We do not have massive stimulus. So we have also seen effective asset mechanisms. 
Uh, we have some uh, disturbances uh, here, but it is generally reasonable and uh, balanced. Um, thank you, all today's speakers, for your professional introduction. And uh, our press briefing has come to a conclusion. Thank you.